Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Drew here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update. And Prime Minister Sánchez has hit back at critics that say he is trying to destroy the country by saying that there is no political party in Spain that loves the country more than the Socialist Party. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, Prime Minister Sanchez busy at the weekend defending his political party's ideals, hitting back at some of the hate that comes from the opposition parties here in Spain. And as we can see from this headline, he was defending social democracy and the legacy of the PSOE party here in Spain against the Partido Popular, embarrassed by Vox. If there's a party that loves Spain, it's the Socialist Party. With this message, the Secretary General of the Socialist Party and President of the Government, Pedro Sánchez, has vindicated a political project that he said has brought the greatest social advances and social justice from the hand of the governments of Felipe González and José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero. Sánchez has repaid the loyalty that both offered him this Saturday with multiple references to their achievements and laws such as abortion or gay marriage and has pledged to repeal the so-called gag law and the PP's labour reform. But above all, he vindicated social democracy against neoliberalism, inequality, and the insults that he said make up the political project of a PP that is disorientated, self-conscious, and contaminated by the far right in reference to Vox. So no political party here in Spain, according to the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, has advanced the country more when it comes to social issues. And according to Mr Sánchez, social democracy is the only way to go. Now, in a part of Spain that was ruled by socialist governments for 35 years, and where perhaps its legacy is best on display, 35% of Andalusia's population is at risk of extreme poverty and social exclusion. The Andalusia Network for the Fight Against Poverty and Social Exclusion has published its 11th annual report, Poverty That Arrives, in which it highlights that 35.1% of the population of Andalusia is at risk of poverty and or social exclusion, according to data from 2020. The report points out that the brutal effect of the pandemic caused by COVID-19 is corroborated. According to this report, all the items showing severe material deprivation occur at very high rates in Andalusia, with rates much higher than the national averages. In 2020, the severe poverty rate, measured on the basis of the percentage of people living on a maximum income of €534 Euros per month per consumption unit in Andalusia, is 11.6%. So again, another terrible statistic coming out of the autonomous community of Andalusia, with 35% of the population down there at risk of extreme poverty and social exclusion. Now, another problem that the Prime Minister of Spain has said that he is going to tackle is prostitution. And as we can see here from this headline, Spanish PM vows to abolish prostitution. Speaking to supporters at the end of his Socialist Party's three-day Congress in Valencia, Mr. Sánchez said that the practice enslaves women. Prostitution was decriminalized in Spain in 1995, and in 2016, the UN estimated the country's sex industry was worth 3.7 billion euros. A 2009 survey found that up to one in three Spanish men had paid for sex. However, another report published in 2009 suggested that the figure may be as high as 39%, and a 2011 UN study cited Spain as the third biggest centre for prostitution in the world, behind Thailand and Puerto Rico. Prostitution is currently unregulated in Spain, and there is no punishment for those who offer paid sexual services of their own will as long as it does not take place in public spaces. However, pimping or acting as a proxy between a sex worker and a potential client is illegal. So prostitution, according to that article and various reports, a very big business indeed here in Spain. And the third biggest center in the world for prostitution behind Thailand and Puerto Rico. Now another problem facing Spain this winter is a lack of water. As we can see here, Spain faces historic water shortages. Half the country could be short of water if it doesn't rain. The perfect storm is coming. Climate change, rising temperatures, less rainfall and a huge demand for water. If this continues, we could face water shortages in the coming months. But the question is, how is it possible that having had the same rainfall, or slightly more than in previous years, during the hydrological year that has just ended, we have reached September with the reservoirs 12 points below the average. To be precise, the data show that the reservoirs currently hold 23% less water than the average of the last 10 years, and 13% less than at the same time a year ago. 
The problem is demand. In Spain, water is consumed without control. It is disproportionate consumption, especially for irrigation, and this is risky for the coming months, says Santiago Martín Barajas, an expert in water management at Ecologistas en Acción. So water use in Spain, especially when it comes to irrigation, is a huge problem for the country, and possible water shortages on the horizon. Now another person here in Spain has copped a beating for asking a person to put a mask on in a public space. As we can see here, a man beats up an off-duty policeman in Zaragoza for asking him to wear a face mask. An off-duty national police inspector was injured on Sunday when a man beat him up inside a city bus in the Aragonese capital. The incident took place at around 4 a.m. on Avenida de Madrid when the inspector asked the young man to comply with health regulations and to put on a mask because he was traveling on urban public transport. Upon identifying himself as a police officer, the assailant began to threaten the officer and hit him in the chest until he finally knocked him to the ground. So another example of how some people in this country don't like being told what to do, even if it's by a police officer. Now an update on the COVID-19 vaccination campaign here in Spain. And according to this headline, 90% of the population vaccinated is still a long way off. Some autonomous communities are going to get there, but it is difficult for all of them to do so. Spain, the first major Western country to surpass 70% vaccination coverage, has also been the one that has most clearly shown the world that this target fell far short, at least in two ways. First, because we will need 90% or more to come close to herd immunity. And secondly, because understanding the vaccine is a magic bullet, regardless of other health recommendations, is not enough to contain the epidemic, as the fifth wave in the summer showed. So to get 90% of the population fully vaccinated here in Spain, still a long way off, and the figure seems to be stuck around the 78% mark. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain, and we can see that the accumulated incidence rate is now down to 40.85. There are still 1,835 COVID patients hospitalized around the country, and there are still unfortunately 443 COVID patients in ICU. Now the pollution problem in Murcia's Mar Menor made international headlines at the weekend and the New York Times went with the headline how a stunning lagoon in Spain turned into green soup. The Mar Menor, a saltwater lagoon on the coast of southeastern Spain, was long renowned for its natural beauty, drawing tourists and retirees to its pristine warm shallows and the area's gentle Mediterranean climate. But over the past few years, the idyllic lagoon has come under threat. Tons of dead fish have washed ashore as the once crystalline waters became choked with algae. Scientists are divided over whether climate change, causing excessive heat that reduces oxygen levels in water, is contributing to the problem. But they agree that nitrate-filled runoffs from fertilizers from nearby farms have heavily damaged the waters where oysters and seahorses used to thrive, but farmers in the area have balked at shouldering the blame. So all the evidence down there in the Marmanor pointing to excessive farming, but the farmers in question refusing to be held accountable. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Catherine, and thanks Stu for another interesting video. I want to be in Spain in March, but unless our Canadian government moderates its ridiculously stringent re-entry requirements soon, I'm not booking anything. Yeah, Catherine, thanks for the comment, and I'm sure that's a situation that a lot of Canadians find themselves at the moment. Not easy to travel given the restrictions that governments still have in place. And it's the same situation for a lot of Australians too. Even though the country is talking about opening up again, allowing international flights to land, people are still hesitant to book tickets because they don't know the conditions, especially when it comes to quarantining, because there's no point going back to Australia for a holiday for three weeks if you have to quarantine for one of those. So I'm with you on that one, and I'm not gonna book anything just yet. One here from Valerie. Hi Stu, does Asian food exist in Spain? Not talking about the ubiquitous sushi. In Australia, there is a huge choice of Chinese, Thai, Vietnamese, Malaysian, etc., which I have grown to like after migrating here almost 10 years ago. Thanks, Val. Yeah, Val, thanks for the comment, and you can find Asian food here in Spain. Chinese restaurants are everywhere, Japanese restaurants are everywhere, and in the big cities like Madrid and Barcelona, you can find a lot of Thai restaurants and other types of Asian food. However, it's a different story when you go to some of the smaller, more regional cities here in Spain, you won't find a lot of Asian cuisine. But even in the big cities, you don't get the same amount of Asian restaurants that you would get in an Australian city, but that obviously has something to do with the demographics of Australia and the demographics of Spain. One here from Linda, all prices here in the UK are going up at a fast pace. 
It's very worrying. Dear Linda, thanks for the comment, and I think it's a worldwide trend at the moment that prices are going up everywhere. Doesn't matter whether you are in the UK or in Spain, prices are on the way up. And as we saw the other day, it is getting harder and harder for a lot of people to make ends meet. More expensive to do the shopping, and more expensive to fill up the car. Worrying times. One here from Alan, first day back in Lanzarote after so many cancellations to my holidays, and what a fantastic time we are having. Stu, your videos have always been great and true. You have kept my faith in returning to Spain and their beautiful islands. Time to hit the beach again, bud. Thank you, Stu. Yeah, Alan, thanks for the comment. You are welcome, and good to see that you are back on the island of Lanzarote down there in the Canaries. And what I wouldn't give to be able to hit the beach right now, so enjoy. One here from Nicholas, how much does the PSOE pay you, Stu? Yeah, Nicholas, thanks for the comment, and obviously you are another person that thinks that I am a government spokesperson. And it just goes to show how delusional some people, like yourself, Ah, so keep on guessing, mate, and one day you might work out what my political preferences are. And finally, one here from UB, cool linguistics. Okuba sounded to me like a cognate of Occupy, and a squatter is essentially an occupier of someone else's property. Now I have to look up squat and squatter's etymology. Yeah, UB, thanks for the comment, and it is exactly that. Okupa, Okupa, Occupy, Occupy somebody's home, squatter. And aren't some Spanish words absolutely fascinating? On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Tell us what your favorite Spanish words are. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. We'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.